this week on Not Just Another Sex Podcast. You can't start with a criticism. You're selfish. You don't care about us. That's a conflict versus I've been feeling neglected because you've been working a lot and I've been missing you and your son is missing you. Can, oh. can we spend some time together? <laughs> but, but no, but no, seriously, <laughs> like, that's a good point. <laughs> like, but, but, like, yo, but, but it's true. Like, that's tone, 100% true. Tone I, and, that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Being an entrepreneur, I don't pay attention to time. To me, I, I look at it, I'm very direct and, I, in my mind, logical. As long as the bills are paid, you don't got to worry about shit, and you good, you should be happy. Because you value, but and this is where the, the value that, part comes in, because what you value. Right. But when you're from two different sides, you'll be like, I don't care how much this, that, and the other cost, or what you do to do this. I want time. And that's hard for people that don't look at it the same way. Mm. Presence versus being a provider. We got to find a better balance. Mm. Right. Okay. Hey, sugar. I feel like there are so many different things that I need to learn as an adult. I'm this nasty on a regular day, like on a Tuesday. I am your host, Samaya Burton. And don't worry, it's not just another sex podcast. Thank you guys for coming out to the What Men Want panel. My name is Samaya. I am the host of Not Just Another Sex Podcast, as well as the owner of this this space, the Something Extraordinary Content House. So um, today's panel is in honor of June being National um, Men's Health Awareness Month, which is so. Oh, thanks, Mac. <laughs> She's like, should I clap? It's so awkward. Um, Thank you um, for us to just make space uh, for the men in our lives. Um, I know as a woman, a lot of times we monopolize conversations and a lot of things are centered around us. Um, and being who I am, sex is always also centered around us, around pleasure and what's not being done and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to make a space where instead of just talking about men, we talk to them. Um, so starting now, if you have anything to say, you can ask a question, you can type it, and you can ask me, but you cannot answer unless you're a man in this room, okay? All right, so the panelists have already consented to asking, you know, answering the questions, so we know we're going to hear from them, but um, if there is something from the crowd, you can always, you know, just kind of blurt it out, and I'll repeat it for you. Um, we're not necessarily going to pass a mic around the um, the audio and the setup here is because this is a live audience recording because, I mean, why not bring back the 90s, right? Um, <laughs> so we kill two birds with one stone. We get to have this meet and greet. Um, the ladies get to see some eye candy and listen, uh, listen, <clears throat> listen uh, to the men talk, um, but we're going to have a good time while we do it. So I am going to start with the panel introducing themselves. All right. So let's see. Caleb, go I'll ahead. Start. Yeah. yeah I'll start. I'll start. There we go. Um, so what's up, guys? My name is Caleb Seals. Uh, I'm a director, cinematographer, production company owner, et cetera, et cetera. All so, right. That's me. All right. T um, tell them your sign, too. It's good. You're talking to women yeah, in here. Yeah, you know, they're going to want to know. Uh, so. Yeah, so Scorpio, um, birthday is November the 8th. So shout out my Scorpios in the room. If there's anybody. <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs> my turn, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is Max Stanley Kazo. I am a licensed mental health therapist with a specialization in couples therapy. I'm most known for infidelity recovery. In terms of sign, I'm a Leo. August 10th, we run the world. <laughs> He ain't lying. <laughs> Go ahead, James. Hit it with us. Hit it. My name is James Harvey. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm a physical therapist uh, with a focus on not just the physical, uh, but everything that results in how the physical presents. Uh, so it's physical therapy, uh, but with a, with a strong focus on your mental and your spiritual health as well. All right. Last, uh, I'm Kelly Bonds. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've had my own companies for about 17 years. I'm a Gemini. At my birthday was... <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gemini and I'm Puerto Rican. That makes oh. me... <laughs> <laughs> and, and he likes it. <laughs> that was implied when he said Puerto Rican. Birthday is <laughs> June 6th, so last Tuesday. Happy yes, birthday. happy belated birthday. I just want to say one more thing, too. Uh he built this entire house. So while we talking about him being a Gemini, like 
Yes. This, this brother be doing his thing, so. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Caleb, you got to relax today. You're not working today. <laughs> I know y'all not used to it. It's just so different. You know, I'm going to need all y'all to chillax today, okay? The panel is not allowed to get their drinks, right, okay? Cool. But but there are some rules. You're going to have to ask, you know? We're going to have to communicate. Uh, okay. I saw it that time, Lauren. I got you. Um, but we're going to get to it. And then we also have two other gentlemen on the team today. Uh, Warren, um, the head of 404 Four or four creators, um, also my podcast videographers here, and then also Brandon, my personal videographer and um, photographer for the podcast as well um, and the content house. So um, those are the fellas that we are talking to today. Um, and honestly, just making space. Um, as women, we always ask for things. We are constantly asking for things. Um, and men don't ask for a lot. And all of us are intricate people. If someone is not asking for a lot, it's probably because they're not saying something. So we have to use our emotional intelligence to say, okay, how can we make a safer place for us to have the conversations that we need to have? Okay. No one is looking for perfection. We're looking for progress. And so this is my contribution just to be an ally for the fellas because I love them very, very, very much. Okay. Um, we every love, we love you too, right? <laughs> Amen. And thank you for this. <laughs> of course, of course. Um, so I had each of these gentlemen on the panel for a reason. Um, first of all, James is my. Oh, let's make sure everything is on vibrate. Okay, yeah. vibrate. Everything on vibrate. Live audience recording. We love y'all. I mean, we people. We gonna hear mistakes and coughs and things like that. But you know, whatever. Um. Okay, so as far as this audio, if you guys are listening, this is actually being filmed. So if you would like to see what it looks like in person and these handsome gentlemen up here on my panel, make sure that you subscribe to Patreon where you can see not only this year, but also last year's panel as well. Um, And I'm really just super grateful that last year we were hosted by the patio. Shout out to Keith um, for supporting us. Um, But this year we're hosting the panel at my own space. And so it's just really great to see um, the vision come together. So thank you to everyone that showed up because that's a part of it. It's not a live audience recording if the audience don't come. So, uh, (laughs) but um, each of these guys was picked to be on the panel for a reason. I feel like as a woman, um, I know what type of man, you know, amongst ourselves that we talk about that we want. And I believe that each of these gentlemen is a reflection of that. Um, Last year when we had the panel, I believe that each of those gentlemen was a reflection of that. Okay, so we need to hear from men that are aligning with the type of men that we want in our lives and the way that we want to raise our sons and the type of men that we want to have around us. So um, with that being said, um, James doing physical therapy and being a doctor of physical therapy. um, And I say that I know that it, it always makes you're uncomfortable but it's it's what you've earned it's what you've you've done and that's amazing um but doing that it's not about just getting your body together but having the repetition to make your life healthier um you don't go to the dentist and then be like all right thanks so much and then not brush until you see them next time Right. Um, With his field, he teaches you how to incorporate the things that you need in your life every single day to ultimately have the life that you want in 60 years. You know, Um, and that's important. JJ is the handyman for this house. Um, He is um, a married man and he showed up and he was able to assist me in all the ways that. I feel as a woman that I needed to be supported in doing this particular business. So, I mean, they're showing up and they're like, hey, we taking our trash before we go. And hey, is we see that a fella is here with you. Can we leave you here with him? And all of that, like on top of building the library from scratch and changing out all the crazy 70s that was lost in this house when we first bought it. And all the stuff that we have broken along the way. <laughs> the week after I bought this house was still in Philly. And, and JJ was like, oh, it's no problem. We can fix it. Like he just, I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so on top of just the work that he was doing, I'm um, just showing up and still being a gentleman, even while being married. And I love the fact that all of these men, whether they're in relationships or not, they're still showing up as a gentleman to the other women that they encounter. If a man is only being a gentleman when he's attracted to you, you guys, that's weird. Okay. Um, and so I really love that about them. It also shows the type of partner that they have that has that type of confidence. So these are the details that as women, I think that we need to pay attention to when we're trying to figure out what is a good man. Okay. Um, and then we have Mac, who is a phenomenal therapist. Um, I think that it's very important to have someone who can, um, speak up from a 
a medical side and mental side um, when we're talking about different things. And sometimes with the lack of the, the lag in communication or the differences in communication with women talking super, super fast and putting things out and sometimes men needing a moment to process. I know that Mac has the skills um, and the education and things like that. And he's studied how to keep up and make sure that you guys is the fellas thoughts are not lost in the room. Um, and I think that's very important. Um, and then we have Caleb, who is an all around entrepreneur as well, and also has been very helpful as far as like supporting as far as like uh, consulting with me doing the content house, another studio in the city um, and different things like that. So I think that is very important to for someone to be in the same career field as a woman and help bring them up, because a lot of these fields are male dominated. And so when men reach out and say, hey come up here and be on set with this. Um, when men make space for us, that's really important. So it's not always about the dating aspect of the men. You have to look at the friendships of the men and how you guys are moving in businesses as the men, okay? Um, so even if they're not for you romantically, you guys, you should still have great men around you, okay? All right, so I said a whole bunch, um, but that's pretty much the gist of that. So um, I just want to explain what each of them do before we get into it. And as far as how this is gonna go, we'll ask a few questions Um Everyone doesn't have to always respond, but I always want at least two responses. Um, but if everyone wants to, totally fine. I'll gauge and adjust to you guys. OK, so today is about you and shout out to Erotic Boudar for sponsoring um, today, as well as Pure Intimacy, uh, this event. Um, and we're going to get started. Hey, you guys hope you're enjoying the show. I just had to stop by and let you know that if you have not ordered your thigh high socks from Sexual Essentials, you're behind. I know how it feels to buy lingerie and you say, ooh, I'm going to be real sexy and put it on and it's sitting in the back of your drawer collecting dust. Let me tell you, the thigh high socks are just so convenient. They're super sexy and they're actually comfortable. So instead of feeling like you have to make that large leap into lingerie, try the thigh high socks. Your partner gets to see you looking sexy as well as yourself and they're super comfortable. Don't forget to use our code NJASP for 15% off. Tell your friends and make sure that you get your favorite color before they're gone. All right, now back to the show. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as women, we value particular things. Uh, we value affection. We, we value communication and s- things like that. Um, one of the d- reasons that we have so much difficulty communicating is because you all's value systems as men are different than what we value as women. So we also have learned that every man has a different value system depending on how he was raised or what's important to him. So what are the three things that you believe that your value system is based off of? And y'all can start wherever you want. <laughs> value system. Maybe I should have started with a booty hole question. No. <laughs> no? Okay. I was trying to ease you in. Like okay. a little foreplay. I, I can start <laughs> I can start it off. Um I got three actually. And um Talk to him. it's very simple. We can cuss, right? <laughs> you can say this is not just Netflix podcast. You can say whatever you want, as long as you bring that mic closer to your mouth so they can hear it. <laughs> uh very simple. <laughs> Fuck me, feed me, appreciate me. Oh. All right. That's that's pretty simple. Okay, you want to explain why you have those? Uh, I mean, sex is obvious. Uh, feed me. I think that's obvious as well. But appreciation, I think, is the biggest thing that men lack. Mm. I'm going to go ahead and swing this over to Mac because Mac is going to explain why sex is so important to men. Because when women hear it, don't look like that, Mac. We talked about it on your episode already <laughs> before. If y'all don't know, y'all can check out uh, Mac on Not Just Another Sex Podcast. He goes into different things. But Mac has a... um a thought process around the things that men get when they're in the moment of sex. And I just want him to expound on that. Yeah. And <clears throat> that's exactly where I was going to go. So you just read my mind, right? Um, so sex tends to be important for men because it's not just sex, right? We do get that appreciation. We, we do get that support. We do feel loved and appreciated and wanted. And those are all the things that male has trouble communicating. Right. We can say we miss you or we love you or there's there's just a number of feelings that we don't know how to communicate, but that we need. And sex is the gateway to experiencing that. So it's not just we're having sex and we're just going through it. No, I'm feeling love. You're touching mm. me. You're holding me. You're caressing me. You're kissing me. So I'm experiencing all of these emotions at once. Hence why when a man is rejected, we take it so hard. You're not just rejecting sex. You're rejecting me. Mm. Okay. Thank you. 
Do you want to go ahead and say your values as well while we on you? Um, you know what? I am not far off from him. <laughs> <laughs> Feed me because yeah. I'm always hungry yeah. and I want to eat. Touch me. You pass by me, you got to touch me, man. If not, I'm touching you because yeah. if, if you don't touch me all day, I didn't feel loved. Uh, like yeah. you just mm. passed right here and yeah. you didn't touch me. Yeah. Unacceptable. The nerve. How dare you? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's really that simple. Just touch me. And the third for me would be being listened to. Mm. I, I I think that us men need a space where we can come home and kind of talk and express and for that to just be listened to. Like, I don't need you to solve it. I don't need to hear your opinion. I don't need you to butt in. Just give me the grace to express myself. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's it. Hey, you said something I, I just, now you got nah, it, 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 he just he just hit home with everything he was saying um just to add to that i would say like just peace mm-hmm. you know at its core just coming home and you're in a safe enough space to where you're not sitting in the parking lot you're not sitting in your driver you want to go in the house you know just having that peace is the key thing so maybe i'm really needy because i need all of those things <laughs> um the feed me part i'm comfortable eating like the same meal every day mm-hmm. So if you don't feed me, I can figure that out. It's cool. But I need all of those things. Um, and another piece of that is having a, I need, I need freedom to do whatever feels right to me. Maybe that's when I'm, when we together, we can be in the same room. We, we cannot be touching. We'll be present. It'll be intimate the whole time. I'm going to also need some time to do that for myself, by myself. So if you allow me that freedom to, to do what recharges me, uh, you're going to get all that energy back. Yeah. Um, so Mac uh, kind of talked on the on the um, the fact that sex is really a compilation of multiple things that you really want, which are forms of affection, um, and also they're non sexual forms of affection and intimacy. What are your What are some things that your partner can do to make you feel um, like they're being affectionate with you? And if you're not totally sure on what those things are, it's okay. You can just meet us where you're at. Um, but knowing that sex gives affection and validation and, you know, uh, anything else that's on there, whatever that it gives <laughs> or just it makes you feel however you feel. What are other things that are not sexual that they can do personally for you that makes you feel seen or feel like, damn, that shit feel like sex, but we're not having sex. A hug. A hug. A hug. Like when I walk through the door and you just run to me. And you give me a hug and I get to pick you up and just hold you there. Like you are holding me and I'm holding you. I feel so loved and so appreciated, so seen that Mm. there's nothing you can ask after that that you won't get. I should also mention Mac and and Kelly are both married men. I know that for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for saying the things like, oh, no problem after that. Um, Those are married men. Um, And then you... Okay, James, you please share whatever you'd like to share, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, And Caleb as well, just share with the room. Because I also want you to understand that everyone's perspective will depend on where they are in their life. Okay, so when you're listening, you're like, well, why he ain't responding like that? That's somebody's husband. He been doing it. He could tell you you the cheat code. But also, single men deserve grace as well. Just like as a single woman, you don't have it all right and all together. And you can hear how where someone is and what they're okay with and what they want is a reflection of where they are in their dating process process so so that freedom that i want to have in my relationship uh i'm in the healthiest relationship i've ever been in in my life and man let's give my hand for that come on dog i love love that for you i appreciate y'all it's supporting her yeah that felt good uh my partner has the same freedoms that i have so uh my loving relationship that i have Well, she happens to have another loving relationship. She's married. Uh, So, yeah, that's what it is. So James is polyamorous, y'all. Yes. Uh, Interesting. (laughs) Yes. James is my best friend. I would like to say that I told him years ago that he was polyamorous and he just got around to, you know, listening to me. Um, But it's about you today. So I'm going to let it be. Um, But we love that for you. We do. Um, (laughs) And for me, I'm, I'm dating right now. So I'm not in a relationship. Well, I'm exclusive, <laughs> but I'm not, you know, in a, um, I'm not married. So, I'll say, so. Kelly, my, so everyone else is monogamous except for James then. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Those are the characterizations. So we have monogamous and then we have polyamory if you're, you know, trying to understand the differentiation. Yeah. Okay. The other things that you were saying make you feel loved, like. 
That's oh, cool. physical touch is a big thing for me. So the hug is amazing. Put your hands on my scalp. Like, mm. yeah, like I wash my hair myself. I do all that, but like moisturize it. I'm looking at you for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> do all of those things and you can get whatever you want from me. You taking notes? <laughs> she mm-hmm. already know. <laughs> oh. I mean, kind of going back to what Max said, I, I'm, I think I'm the complete opposite. Appreciation, that's why I use that word. I think men don't feel appreciated a lot. That's why they go and venture off. Mm-hmm. So appreciation covers a lot of ground. I mean, I take it as second nature that when I walk through the door, I'm going to get hugged by my wife. I'm going to get hugged by my son because we ain't seen each other all day. But at the same time, appreciation goes way further. Facts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because and what does appreciation look like for you? Just knowing that you're good overall. My wife knows that she's protected. She's loved. Um, she doesn't have to worry about anything. And I'm coming home every day. We heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um one of the things that James talked about was having um the freedom. Um sometimes it can sometimes it's difficult to say the things you want if you don't know how to communicate those things. And we've learned that men and women communicate very 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 differently. Um what are some things that are like green flags when it comes to communication and then some things that are like red flags when you're communicating with your partner or Things that may be, and that doesn't have to be like, oh, this is good or this is bad. What are some things that they may do when you're trying to communicate that may make it difficult for you to keep opening up? Or what are some things that you do that that you do or you see when you're talking that make you feel like, okay, like help you more confident to communicate? So I'll start. So like in situations where like even though somebody may not fully agree with you Mm -hmm. on a perspective, they still listen to what you have to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're still open enough to, like, hear what you hear your perspective and, like, okay, that's your thought. And that's, I'm still giving you space to say whatever it is, you know, about that perspective. And it's not like, I'm going to shut it down based on my past experiences or my past trauma. You know what I mean? So that's the key thing for me. Okay. And that's actually a a very good point, right? Because communication is not based on agreement. I don't care whether or not you agree with what I'm saying. What's important to me is, are you able to put yourself in my shoes Mm. and understand my perspective? And then for you to tell me what is it that you understand so I can feel hurt. The reason why couples are so stuck in conflict is because they're trying to decide who's right or wrong. No, we're both right and we're both wrong. My my perspective is real for me. Your perspective is real for you. you. That's not debatable. But- can you get into a space where you can understand where I'm coming from, where I can understand where you're coming from, then we can reach an understanding a lot faster. It can be two truths. That's completely fine. Exactly. Well, how do you do that with two different backgrounds? 96% of the time, the way you start a conversation is exactly how it's going to end. You can start with a criticism. You're selfish. You don't care about us. That's a conflict. Versus I've been feeling neglected because you've been working a lot and I've been missing you and your son is missing you. Can, oh, can we spend some time together? <laughs> but, but no, but no, seriously, <laughs> like, that's a good point. <laughs> like, but, but, like, yo, but, but it's true. Like that's tone, 100% true. Tone I've, I've and, through that. Yeah. yeah. Being an entrepreneur, I don't pay attention to time. To me, I, I look at it. I'm very direct and I, in my mind, logical. As long as the bills are paid, you don't got to worry about shit. And you good, you should be happy. Because you value. But and this is where the, the value that, part comes in because what you is. value. Right. But when you're from two different sides, you'll be like, I don't care how much this, that, and the other cost or what you do to do this. I want time. And that's hard for people that don't look at it the same way. Mm. Presence versus being a provider. We gotta find a better balance. Mm. Right. Because okay. a lot of times we're focused on providing. But our presence is being missed. And to a lot of our partners, that's the most important thing. But a lot of times that provide the way that you fell in love with a person is because of how they provide it. So then when different variables come into play, you got to shift so on both sides. On both sides. The, the word that keeps on being repeated is what I need the most for myself and for my partner. Presence. Presence in your own body, in your own mind. So I need my partner to have 
uh, some type of practice of being present with themselves. Mm -hmm. Because then you can more consistently and effectively communicate your emotions. Like, I feel like this instead of just the emotion of, man, I'm sick and tired of you doing exactly. that thing. Right. So I need I need my partner. I need us to have our individual practices of that and our time together uh, to do that. If it's like if we kind of bantering back and forth. Like, tell me all the petty shit you want to because that shit is hilarious. We're going to have fun. We're going to get these feelings off <laughs> and we're going to have fun in the meantime. The main thing that we're talking about that I want to just highlight, too, is like tone and delivery. Like the way you deliver a message is everything, you know, male and female, the way you communicate, the way you talk to people, all of that goes a long way. So if you communicate in a way to where you would receive what you're saying to that person, then you're going to be good. Any any other situation outside of that, it's just not going to pan over well. Yeah. So as a as a woman, I can say that a lot of women need to work on their emotional maturity as far as like how they handle what they're feeling versus the logic part of what's actually going on. Um, what are some ways that you guys what or what ways do you guys um, implement in your life, making sure that you save space for the emotions and then also the logic of the conversation? Um, or are you still figuring it out? Because a lot of times um I don't think that women understand that someone doesn't mind listening to your emotions, but that doesn't mean they need to listen to it during the presentation of what the difficult, the issue is. Maybe it's not the moment. Maybe you just need to tell me what the problem is, which is a logical thing, which is, Hey, I don't, I just cleaned the house. I prefer you put your clothes in the dirty line. I don't want to pick up after clothes, you know, versus, and it makes me feel da, 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 all at the same time. And then now, you know, can you talk to how those things make you feel, how to help with criticism and different things like that? And it's kind of just a wide area there. Yeah. I think I think everything has to start with self. So I need to have some type of practice, once again, of being present with myself so I can communicate those things. Um, and I have to I have to be able to tell a woman how I feel Instead of telling a woman what to do, nobody wants to be told <laughs> what to do, but a woman is really comfortable with hearing the emotional part of it. So it's getting to that realization as a, of a man of like, okay, I need to be able to communicate these things and not just tell her what I want her to do. I got to be doing it my damn self mm -hmm. for myself first. Right. And she'll just, she'll follow wherever I lead her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's also a, a significant difference between a criticism and a complaint. A criticism, I'm attacking your character. I'm coming at you. A complaint, I'm highlighting a problem that we're having that, that we need to address, right? So in, in terms of laundry, right? Um, you don't take, take care of yourself. You're just a dirty person. Right. I'm Damn. attacking you versus, <laughs> Hey, I would like if you can place your dirty clothes in the laundry hamper. One, create a conversation. One, create conflict. That's why being mindful and being present with ourselves that we can identify exactly what feeling we're experiencing before we vo vocalize it is extremely important. Mm -hmm. um, That's real. So, mm -hmm. next. I'm sorry. No, I agree. Oh. I mean... <laughs> It's, I don't know how to say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here, I mean, man. I got you. I, I just say it is, uh, it's not about what you say, it's how you say it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so, it. like, if you call my phone, where you at? It, it makes it, it comes off strong. Yeah. But if you say, you're throwing an easy babe or an easy, hey, how's your day going? It makes it softer. Yeah. And so I say it that way. It's not about what you say, it's how you say it. Hey, you guys, it's your host, Samaya. If you're enjoying the topics over here, Honestly, I think you'd love the topics over on my learning platform. I have some private interviews over there with some amazing guests. I've interviewed Mr. Marcus. Yes, that's the porn star. Passion Jones, who brought on her husband and her boyfriend. And even had some girls night conversations with Medina from Cocktails, as well as Mila from Good Moms, Bad Choices. That conversation was amazing. We did some examples of our dirty talk. And let's just say you need to check it out. Don't just take my word for it. Make sure that you click the link below and sign up today. There are over 250 workshops classes, interviews, and so much more. All right, now back to the show. Um, so to JJ, I'm sorry, to Kelly's point, uh, to Kelly's point about um, 
not necessarily having the words. Sometimes it's the actions that men do that are their self-care or where they release steam or where they're able to keep the patience that we love about them and the gentleness that they really do provide. Um, and sometimes that's in the form of working out or going to the gun range or whatever your self-care practices are. So what do your self-care practices look like? What are the things that bring you peace and, you know, allow us to have the best version of you when you you know, come to a woman, what are those things for you? Um, I'll say like isolation sometimes. Like um I'm I'm big on going outdoors, like just going for a walk, going hiking, um, spending time in my own thoughts. Like I think all of those things are key. Um and that doesn't mean that I don't want to be with my person, but I just need that time to kind of isolate, recharge, and then revisit whatever I need to revisit. And I think that that's what the, the this question is more so to hear how four different men have different versions of what that recharge looks like, because a lot of times you don't you be like, well, why you got to go to the gym today? If that's his therapy, then that's where he needs to be. And with four different types of men, what that looks like can look different. So a lot of times we pick and choose when we want to accept what's how someone moves. So it's like, oh, well, I'm going to therapy. And it's like, oh, yeah, good job. Go do that. But if I say, oh, I'm going to play basketball. Now you don't think that. That that's how you rate or that's how you value that thing. And, you know, video games come up all the time and yeah. things like that. Um, I don't think that we should judge how anybody does what they do as long as that it's not excessive to the point that it's interfering with your responsibilities. How someone else wants to use their time is up to them. Um, so this question is more so so you don't have to defend that, which is I don't want is what I'm doing has nothing to do with you. Mm. Absolutely. What we're talking about is what they have to do to keep themselves as the men that we love and care about um, for you. What does that look like for you? Because they shouldn't have to constantly defend it. No one wants to be in a relationship where they have to defend every choice. And when I say relationship, it's not just romantic, but a friendship, a partnership, or anything where they have to explain themselves to you. It's It becomes tiresome because I have to make sure you agree almost. It's almost like a parental energy, which is unnecessary. Amen. Nobody want to date nobody where it feels like they talking to their mom out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what it is. Like, they want to date somebody where it's like, you're supporting me. Um, I feel like I have an actual partner. You know what I'm saying? You have a capacity of things that you enjoy and do and stuff like that. And I do too. I don't want to push you to your capacity. You know what I'm saying? Don't push me to mine. That's what it is. Yeah. But allow allow me the space and opportunity to do the things that make me feel good. So my practice is like... I need you to like leave me alone. I'm going to go meditate for 25 minutes. I'll be right back. Mm. Uh, maybe it'll be, it'll be days where we communicate more often than other days. I ain't going nowhere. I'm here. You're going to feel my energy whether I talk to you in this moment or not. Um, but doing all those things with the understanding of everything that I'm doing for myself is going to benefit you as well. Yeah. Absolutely. And Mac, you can jump in on this because we're married. Uh, and can you bring your mic just a little bit closer? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, I'm, I, so I Mac, you can jump in on this if if you agree. Um, I think a lot of women don't understand that if we didn't want to be there, we wouldn't be there. Mm. I'm telling you, <laughs> so, the man is not going to do anything. You, <laughs> very simple. We're not going to be there. <laughs> very to the point. If we don't want to be there, we wouldn't be there. So if we want to go have a day to ourselves once a week, or this like me fixing up this house was this isn't my job. This is a hobby. So, like, this was my piece. So, it being saying, hey, you're putting too many hours in, this is my piece. But if I didn't want to be here, I didn't want to be with you, I would leave. Yeah. There wouldn't be no if ands, or buts about it. Yeah. I'm not staying nowhere I'm not happy. Yeah. And on average, um, couples that, that have children together only spend 10% of their time together, right? So, it's very important to learn how to make that 10% count. So when it's time for, for us to take time for ourselves, our partners are not feeling cheated, right? They're, they're, they're not feeling um, what's sort of unprioritized or invisible to us. For me, I need a bubble bath. Right? <laughs> I deal with couples <laughs> every day. I hear all of the stories. I'm taking on a lot. Sometimes I need to lock the bathroom Go in that bathtub with bubbles, right? He's, don't forget Kids bubbles. are not allowed in. Wife is not allowed in. The phone is turned off. I need 30 minutes to myself so I can transition from being a therapist to now a husband and father. And I, that's a non-negotiable. I think I need that in my life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
My boy's spitting, dog. I need that. If you got like a certain routine or a certain type of soap, you probably been through some trials with that. I got you. I got you. I don't know the last time I took a bubble bath, but try it, man. It's very relaxing. How many times a week are you getting this in? About twice. With a nice glass of wine, too, man. Oh, some soft music. But but no, seriously, though, I'll say this. Like, every man needs their own routine. Yes. Like, on a weekly basis, daily basis that they do. That's so you can be your best version of yourself. And a relationship shouldn't pull you away from that that routine. You know what I'm saying? You should stay, um, you know, in the same space where, like, you're, like, doing those things on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? A relationship should make you more of yourself. Yeah. Not, not less not of yourself. Not less of yourself. It exactly. It shouldn't be restrictive. It should yeah. be, oh, I get to do more yeah. things that I enjoy yeah. doing. Now. Right. And, and don't allow the relationship to become your identity. Right. Still maintain your social circles, your friend groups, your personal things that you enjoy and continue to do that. Don't don't allow you being a relationship to become that's a, only the thing that you are. Can you all talk to the point of um, because the one thing that is and it always comes up is that men don't make their relationship their entire life. Um, and we understand that we are raised two different ways. Women are more so, and we're transitioning now, mm -hmm. but have been raised to cater and keep the family together. So the things that we have been told to focus on are one thing. And the things that you all have been focused on um, are something else. But what are some things that you, that are attractive as far as like when you're looking to date or that your woman does that shows her individuality, that is a green, a green flag for you. And what are some things that are like red flags for you? Because when the women are listening or, you know, whoever is listening and they're trying to be a more, you know, and really take this stuff in, they could be like, damn, I do that all the time. And it's like, it might be annoying. And also, hopefully it'll create some conversations, which is like, hey, babe, I was listening to this show and they said this annoying. I do that all the time. Is it annoying to you? <laughs> and maybe you're opening up the conversations because men don't always know how to criticize um, or say a complaint without you know, women internalizing it. And I don't think that people should have to walk on eggshells to express when they're uncomfortable. Um, so maybe you guys can just give some examples of like things that you love to see a woman doing when you're, um, whether you're courting her or you're dating or just what's just attractive period, because attraction doesn't stop when you're in a relationship. You can be attracted to something in a woman and still not make an advance or anything, but men are very, they, they, do notice. They're going to notice everything. Um, you don't become blind because you became in something else. So um, what are some of those things and what does that look like? <clears throat> do them toes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like a clean set of toes, a clean set of nails. And I want a picture right after you did it so I can see it. Of course, I'm going to take care of that bill, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's just you taking care of yourself and feeling your best. See, right? like the girly shit. Correct. And you're feeling sexy. And I get to experience you in that space. And that's very important to me. Don't allow what you do throughout the week and not have a self-care routine to recharge yourself. Nah, babe, God, God, do your thing. You it's don't like when you look run down. You don't want, nah. you, you, don't want you to look like what, what you done been through. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the look, all right. I would say, I would say that really that same sentiment, but with different verbiage. I need you to consistently love on yourself. Mm. I want to feel how much you love you. I, and I want to return all that energy back to you. Like, uh, the more you give me freedom, the more love I'm going to give to you, the more you love on yourself, uh, or the more I love you, the more freedom you'll give me. And that cycle just repeats itself. Yeah. Everybody looked at me. <laughs> I we wasn't sure which way it was going. It's between I mean, y'all. Uh, you go okay. No, you good. You good. Yeah. Um, just being who you were when we met. That's what got yeah. us to where we at now. So, if you're still who you are, go spend time with your girls. Um, I don't need you underneath me all the time. Um, the space is what made us come together stronger. So, be who you were. Still be like you said that that feminine side, and just be who you were when we met. Yeah. Don't change up because now we got a family or we got a kid. No. That's why we're here is because of what I fell in love with originally. Um, while you're doing that, um, I actually got a question for my gentleman right here. How did you know your wife was your wife? She challenged the hell out of me. Hmm. Challenged the hell out of me. And she, her challenge forced me to present a version of myself that I didn't know was there. 
And I thank her for this until now. Bro, prior to me even having my license, mm. she rented out an office space for me for, for therapy and bought all the furniture. Wow. Because she believed in me that much. And now, like, we're, we're in a place like she don't got to work, she don't got to worry about nothing because of that investment that she made in me. And at that time, I was questioning whether or not I could do it. So whenever I have these doubts, whenever I need my ego to be stroke or life to be spoken into me, I go directly to her. Once I'm done, bro, I could fight any <laughs> easily. Yeah, yeah, that's real. So that's to, real. to me, that's what set her apart from anything I've experienced before. And the, the, that's a great question. Um, and we're actually going to come back to that oh, later. Too. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's a great segue. Yeah. Um, and we'll just like shift a little bit. So I'm going to ask an additional question and then we're going to have like an intermission um, so y'all can refill y'all drinks and stuff. Um, with that being said, that's not a sexual thing. That's a time thing. Mm -hmm. And um, can you be more specific to the things that... Um, that really helped do that. And I, I asked you specifically because you're, you're pretty good at like saying, okay, it was the, like, was it her boundaries or was it the, um, the initiation, like to do something for you without you having to pay for it? Because even when you spoke about the toes, you immediately said, well, I'm going to take care of that. And a lot of times it's difficult to watch men enjoy or request things when they also have to say, okay, but let me get my wallet and, or feel like they have to do something to deserve the thing that they're asking for. Yeah. So what were the things? Um, and did you feel like, it surprised you because you didn't have to ask for those things or did you ask for those things? Then she just gave them to you, but give us more insight on the specificness of that. Yeah. Uh, for me, I never asked for it is that I would speak of my dreams and the things that I want to accomplish. It might be at mm -hmm. three. I'm like, yo, I have this idea. She's like, hold up, let me grab my laptop. She, the partnership was created early on mm -hmm. and she became invested into me, which allowed me to match her investment by being as invested in her. So for, for a lot of things I would not ask for, and I'd even say like, she know me better than I know myself, right? So having a person that's so attuned to my needs that I don't need to voice every single thing, like she's seeing me for who I am and is able to help me along the way is something that I was not willing to give up. It sounds like she took something off of your plate as well as listen to you. Yes. So listen to you. And then a lot of times I think that when we have partners and when we have like our partner has a view of us and then we have our view of us and as well as we think that we have to carry it all. Um, but sometimes when you are listening to someone talking, they're saying they want these things on your to do list, though, some of those things may not be on your to do list. Mm -hmm. It may be like, oh, I need to do this. And it a lot of those goals may have nothing to do with you at all on your to-do list. Um, but when you have a partner that's like, okay, if you take care of me, I'm going to take care of you. It's like, I did hear your other list. And now that you've taken this off my plate, I have time to make sure that you have that and that it keeps bouncing back and forth. Um, and I think that that's, that's beautiful. 100%. You want to tell us why you married your, your wife? <laughs> Along the same lines, she challenged me. What does challenge look like for you? Because you are a very challenging <laughs> person, uh, JJ. <laughs> Kelly, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, mean, um, I feel like men are nine times out of ten, they're alpha males. So they're used to taking the lead, doing this, having a certain type of ways. I was They used to having a way? Certain type of ways. <laughs> 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 so um and we get stuck in our ways. Mm -hmm. She made me change those. Right away. She set her boundaries. And I was like, hold on. I'm not used to tell, have somebody tell me what to do. Or tell you no. Or tell me no. Mm. You can't speak this way. You can't act, have, act this way. Yeah. Um, you're a grown up now. You're, you're, and, and you're a black man. So and even though we might be in a city where we have a little bit more freedoms, but I come from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And... We're not the, uh, we are the minority. So moving here, I met someone that was educated, um, had a great career, and debating was part of her job. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she was able to humble me. Oh, that's very and important. I've never had somebody humble me. Or at least level with you. Yeah. I mean, because humble is a, I think humble is a misused word. It's a, it's a word where you um, realize like on a lower scale of what's going on. And I don't think anyone is trying to ever, you know, necessarily humble, but well, like level with you. I think needs to be humbled at some times. I think so. Y'all egos get out of control? Yeah. I, to I a think, certain degree. I think, yes. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we all do. 
um, man and female, I would say, like, we, we all need to, uh, be recentered. I like that word. Like, that's just bad. being recentered. Yeah. That's I think bad. that's all key for mm. all of us. So you need, you need somebody that can speak to your <clears throat> soul, that can hear all the rah rah and know, like, okay, in this moment, I know what you're really saying, even if that's not yeah. how it came out your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. The benefit of the doubt in communicating. Mm-hmm. Right. I understand that. Um, and I, I, I am being choosy about the words that we use because one of the things that I've learned just with men is that how you talk to them and what you say to them matters more. Um, as women, we overuse words. And so we're able to say a lot of things and clarify it and things like that. But men are kind of like there for the logic, like, what are you trying to say and be done with it? So whatever words you're saying, if it's a few words, be very choosy about those words because they're only they're, they're here to take the message. So um I, I do try not to say certain things because you guys internalize. And like I said, we are raised differently and how we process those emotions differently. And I think just understanding that we have been raised with a different set of resources than men um, and being and holding space for that and holding grace for that um, to say, you know what? How can I, you know, and keeping that respect when you're communicating and um, and even in criticism, making sure that you don't remove the value from someone when you criticize or ask for changes and things like that. So um, with that being said, we're going to take a intermission and we will be back. <laughs> 